This is a game that's very important and special to me. The original Paper Mario. Um, the game that made me fall in love with RPGs in general, I think. The game that made me fall in love with the wider Mario world, as opposed to simply just playing Super Mario 64 over and over and over again. And one of my all-time favorite N64 games, with one of my all-time favorite climaxes in any game ever. Uh, this game is one of my all-time favorites, and playing it again recently uh, has really made me realize just how good of a game it actually is. Because I think I think most people are kind of stuck on this idea that the Thousand Year Door is the is the best game of the series, but I've always maintained that the original is actually far superior. Because I think the uh, I think the the stories are more interesting. I think the level design are, level designs are better. I think the environments are better. Are better. I think the dungeon designs are better. Um, a, a lot of times, a thousand year door feels very fillerish and very gimmicky. Like <laughs> there's there's a lot of times like where what you're doing in the thousand year doors feels like padding as opposed to this game where like you're encountering new and interesting things every single chapter from raiding a forest raiding a raiding the koopa bros fortress to discovering ancient ruins to exploring a a haunted ghost mansion and then like fighting a monster that eats ghosts like there's so much about this game that just constantly manages to impress you with its creativity, its charm, and how well it seems to fit in with the established Mario continuity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Super Mario RPG didn't really feel like it could have fit in into, a, into the standard Mario world. It felt kind of like its own thing. And this one, because of how well this game was executed, like, I just kind of assumed that Paper Mario, when I was very, very young, was like the standard Mario world, you know what I mean? Like, this is how Mario, Peach, and Bowser interact, <laughs> like, um, in a game, in a way that, in a personally, like, on a personal level, this is how they feel about each other, this is how, uh, things typically go, like, th this is, <laughs> um, it, it it's fantastic like this opening segment uh for example um you enter princess peach's castle she sends you a letter right uh you go to her castle and you meet with a bunch of people who are having a party uh people from all over the mushroom kingdom all of whom like have lots of interesting things to say people will comment on you like how cool you are your relationship with peach uh, um express their admiration for peach uh, <laughs> like talk do a great job of building up just how wonderful and and how wonderful and creative the world is, right? Like they do such a good job of that, doing such a good job of making you feel like this is a this is an actual functional society that um, that people live in. And then <laughs> and then in five minutes, uh, Bowser crashes through the window, announces his presence. Uh, claims that he's going to trounce you this time, and you enter the, a combat phase. A combat that uh, you're programmed to lose, and uh, you're su you're supposed to lose. Uh, a battle that you're supposed to lose, and, and uh, the battle system gets more complicated later on uh, as you unlock more and more abilities. But uh, here, this is a great introduction. This battle is really, really important to me because it does, like, two things really, really, really well. It sets up, like, the general premise, this idea that, like, Mario is up against a Bowser who simply can't be beat this time. And it introduces the core combat of the series in which uh, Mario enters turn-based combat with with an enemy, in this case, Bowser. So, like, obviously, like, the uh, the story gets more complicated as it goes on. It introduces more characters and ideas, and the combat gets more complicated, but uh, this quick segment, this quick intro, where it, where it sets up the world, the setting, the idea, the combat, the gameplay, and then just throws you into it. Like, in less than 10 minutes, uh, I, I have, like, only about 10 minutes of footage here. Um, the fact that it just throws you into this so quickly and does such a great job of making you feel engaged, making you care about the characters, and then just hitting the ground running with great moment after great moment, great character after great character, great area after great area, great chapter after great chapter. And by the time you finally reach 
Bowser's Castle, when you finally get through that final door and enter Peach's Castle, something you've been trying to do all game, and finally make your way up to where Bowser is, it is an incredible feeling. It is spectacular. And beating him, seeing that final ending, seeing that conclusion, um, it is mind-blowing. And um, this is one of those games, I think, that has a very, very special feeling. It, it gives you this very, very special feeling when you beat it. I, I'm not sure if I'm the only one who feels this way, but like beating... There, there are a handful of like really good Nintendo games that just have incredible endings, and and this one, where uh, you just watch the credits roll, where like uh, Luigi leads a parade, and uh, then you see Mario and P Peach just uh, go to Mario's house and just watch the fireworks together, and uh, because it's an old N64 game, the game never resets. It just sort of like keeps firing off more and more fire for fireworks forever and ever, <laughs> and uh, as Peach and Mario and Peach just stare into the uh, the foreground like watching it. It, it it's it's beautiful it is it is wonderful like i i just i just love it so much um like this game really does such a great job with with its I, with its premise of, of like making a true mario rpg this is very very rpg ish you're going around collecting collecting objects you're beating bosses in order to like defeat a super powerful like jrpg villain basically in this game in this uh in this game bowser and uh, it does so well um it, it's kind of remarkable but in a lot of ways i think this game is actually quite a bit better than a lot of the games that it was inspired by i think it's probably better than dragon quest 11 and dragon quest um eight I, I think it's better than like quite a few final fantasies uh seven and ten uh like <laughs> this game is this game does so much not only like takes inspiration for, inspirations from these other genres like they incorporate their own unique elements into it too in which uh you have an you have an overworld map you have a hammer you can interact with objects you have like partners that follow you around they can like they all have their own unique abilities like they can all do different stuff you interact with the environments in different ways as i mentioned the dungeon designs in this are phenomenal and like are probably on par with like a, a typical zelda game actually um really really impressive i this game is an absolute treat to play through. I highly recommend it to anyone interested in Mario, interested in RPGs. Oh, and yes, and this is a very, very good game for uh, first-time RPG fans, too, because it does such a great job of, like, building up the turn-based combat. Because I remember when I first played this, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. But, like, now um, <laughs> I can't get enough of this kind of this kind of thing. Uh, it's This is a great way to introduce younger people to this exciting genre.